Replayability is forcing some players to quit. A new update is coming live, QuakeCon is happening this week, and Wielding Gear is kinda broken. I am Marta Branco and it's news time. Hello, hello everyone, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. So, for those who don't know yet, I have been away for a short holiday in the mountains. Here are some pictures to showcase the beauty of Austria during the summer. Astonishing view, I must add. Anyway, I came back just in time to cover the new Update 21, and there's a lot to go over today regarding news. There's a lot of bored and happy players quitting Fallout 76 due to several reasons. The wielding gear can give you extra stats randomly, and even the player vending machines seem to be bugged again. On the other hand, the PTS is now closed, Update 21 is coming live today with lots of new content, and QuakeCon is happening in a few days. Also, players really want more emotes, and there's plenty of new bugs to discuss. I've got lots to share with you today, so let's get right into it, shall we? I think it's safe to say there is plenty of solid reasons why players get bored or displeased with Fallout 76. There are endless bugs, lots of cheating, and the recent replayability features don't make the game that much appealing for daily fun. Thousands of players have shown how happy they are with the current content recycle features that basically forces people to log in every single day to grind for gold bullion, for score, for script, for caps, for legendaries, for so many different things. On top of that, there are daily and max caps for every currency, which limits and conditions players in so many different ways. In fact, a lot of people have been comparing Fallout 76 to mobile games, which are normally structured with such daily limits to ensure people come back in the next day in order in order to progress. I can't argue with that, it's true, and it's really not the best concept out there in my view. As a PC and console game, a Fallout 76 should probably behave a little bit more like one instead of adopting mobile game features. Sure, it might force people to come back tomorrow in order to progress, but it also creates a lot of negative feelings, a lot of frustration, a lot of self-doubt, you know, why am I even playing this? And the so-called burnout will happen sooner or later. Then tomorrow might never come and players will end up choosing another game to play, naturally. It's the way it is with hundreds or thousands of options in the gaming industry. Only the most loyal and dedicated players will remain if things don't take a turn into a different direction. I actually miss exploring and taking my time to do whatever I felt like in-game, instead of just logging in to grind for dailies and currencies every single day. I think we can all agree it's just not fun or engaging. Let's see what happens with the next DLCs. So, I have recently come back and one of the first things I noticed with my character was a sudden increase of carry weight. I had over 600 at the time, when my maximum is around 500. I knew something was wrong, I just didn't know what exactly. Anyway, one of my wielding armor pieces broke and then I noticed my carry weight decreased a little bit, so I realized it was related to my gear. I decided to re-equip all my armor pieces and voila, the carry weight went back to normal. I had never experienced such a thing before, but according According to some players, this is an old glitch that is now slowly turning into a bug. Apparently, people can somewhat double wielding stats by exploiting, but in this case, I logged in like this already. I didn't touch my gear until I realized something was wrong. So yeah, it's one of these cases where bugs
bugs and glitches have basically no boundaries they get merged together and it's a complete mess the good part here is that this bug seems to be rare and it's actually a positive one so it could be way worse let's put it that way nonetheless let's hope it gets fixed because it is really confusing and unreliable to play with Next, we have a point that is surely live by the time you are watching this video. The new Update 21 is getting released today with lots of new content. The public test server went down a few days ago, but it should return once again when patch 22 is ready to go live and get tested. Now, there are patch notes for the PTS changes for several weeks now, but they might not be the official ones. For now, all we know is that the new public event, a colossal problem, is coming live, as well as many bug fixes and improvement points. It sounds great enough for what it is, but I'm hoping for a lot more, of course. Improvements and new content are always welcome, in my opinion. Alright, we've had a lot of issues in the past months with the player vending machines and despite Bethesda's best efforts to get everything fixed and running smoothly, it seems like the vending machines are still bugging out every now and then. Of course, the bugs are mostly fixed and that's why the complaints decreased, but according to some player reports, the machines can still add random stashed items for sale, which means any player could end up buying things you didn't add for sale, not at all, and that's a real hassle. However, this bug is rare nowadays, as I have reported in another video a while ago, so don't worry too much about it. I can't assure you it won't ever happen to you. What I can assure you though is that it doesn't happen often anymore, so your chances to get affected by this bug are minimal. A new community event has just started, it's called Fortifying Atlas and it's basically an introduction to the return of the Brotherhood of Steel, one of the main factions in Fallout 76 and other Fallout games as well. I am pretty sure you know what to do for this one, you basically have to collect 8 different junk items per phase and deliver them to the Atlas Observatory location, which will become the Brotherhood's new camp. Basically, we have to help these soldiers in return for some rewards, which include cosmetics and other events, such as a Prevair sale, a double daily challenge event, and even a bonus challenge week. Hmm, interesting, no? The rewards are surely not impressive for all the work they are requesting, but A, it's something new and it's a community event, so if every player contributes with just a few dozens of materials per phase, we will get it done in no time. So thumbs up to the team spirit and let's get it done. For a long while, I really thought QuakeCon wouldn't happen this year, but Bethesda changed the format a little bit to suit the quarantine requirements and the event is now going to happen online. Bethesda decided to change the focus of the event as well and they are now featuring a lot of community topics. They are even hosting an Australian panel with Captain Noob and Tyr. There's also a cooking show, a camp showcase, and a cosplay interview, all related to Fallout 76. Great stuff, huh? Bethesda didn't share a lot of details regarding official news so far, but the project lead already revealed that one of the Quest designers will attend the QuakeCon this year to talk more about the new event, A Colossal Problem. So maybe other staff members will join Victoria and talk more about upcoming content. Hmm, that would be awesome indeed, don't you think so? If you watch my news videos on a regular basis, you surely notice that I've been sharing lots of data mine items recently. Well, a new batch just came out a few days ago, but most of them have already been covered by me, so here's what's left. Basically, there's a lot of interesting items, starting with this huge blue lamp, which looks a little bit like a mosquito killer. Really? I guess this is a new trap or a fancy light? I'm not quite sure. Then we have a huge surprise. It is a fenced cage where you can supposedly add your tamed animals inside. How will this work? 
I don't know, maybe it's just a concept, but it would be amazing if it was a practical item to protect tamed animals. We really need something like that in game. Next, we have an eagle statue that can get on fire. I guess it's related to the Blood Eagles Raiders subfaction. There is a new music box with neon colors, looking fancy. Mm. There's also new rustic decorations such as this wall house and this beautiful wall clock with leaves. They will also add an old car for old timers, I suppose. Then there is a new building, it looks like a cement dome and nothing too special. And we are getting a blue cow grill, which looks funny and really creative, honestly. It's a steak statement. Hmm? We are also getting a metal silver door for darker camps and a golden version of the space ride. Lastly, there is a new set with a table and chairs and some defense items too, as you can see. It surely looks promising. Well, this one is not exactly new anymore, but since I was on holiday, I didn't have a chance to report this new bug. The future tech skin from the legendary run is a super buggy item right now, so please don't bother moving your camp to add this skin. Why? Well, because it messes up with the camp rules and you no longer can fast travel to it. Even if you have a player vending machine active, the fast travel icon just won't show up for you or any other players. So yes, best to forget this item even exists for the time being, unless you really want to waste time and walk every time you wish to get back to your camp. I know I wouldn't, but that's entirely up to you. Have you ever wondered how some players spawn faster than you in Nuclear Winter? I really believed it was a glitch because it was a thing back in the days before Bethesda fixed it. You could just press escape to spawn faster, but it doesn't work anymore. Still, some players managed to spawn faster and I just assumed it was another glitch. Well, maybe it isn't, as you can see in this test footage shared by Final Render. It started the match with two accounts in the same match, both computers have similar specs and one spawn into the match way faster than the other account. In fact, he could start looting containers before the other account was even spawned into the match. Crazy stuff. No glitches, no exploits, just Bethesda, I guess. I'm not even sure what to call it. A bug? A loading delay? Server issues? I'm not sure really. At least now we have some more clarity on the issue. Did you know Prevere entries kinda reset? I surely didn't. Here's how it works. As long as you have script, you can buy as many things as you want. All you have to do is server jump and find a new server. That's right, the Prevere entries are instanced for you, so every time you join a new server, you will have a full pool active. Let's say you bought 5 legendary modules already, if you join a new server, it will go back to 10 again, which is the standard pool. This doesn't work for private worlds, as obviously, since it's the same server, I guess if you wait and reset it, then it will work, but it's much faster to join a public server and get it done. In the end, this is basic knowledge, and there is only so much you can buy even with this trick. I mean, we have daily and the max script limits, so it's not like you can buy too much. You buy up to 1k script and that's it. Lastly, players seem to really want more emotes. I have noticed a significant increase of posts about emotes over Reddit. Just in the past month, we have dozens and dozens of players requesting all sorts of emotes, such as thank you, sorry, on my way, not interested, a legendary here, and so many other things. It's actually a curious topic because Bethesda could easily make more emotes and monetize them since new emotes are all 
all accessible through the atomic shop anyway it's something people want and are willing to pay for so i'm not sure why aren't they working on this especially because lots of these suggestions are really useful and they can actually improve communication in game it's one of these things that makes you wonder really i would rather have such emotes than a bunch of random skins in the legendary run rewards for example but maybe that's just me Well, to finish off this video, I had this funny encounter yesterday. I was all tab editing in Nuclear Winter, and then this other player came to share the same bush with me. It was unexpected and funny at the same time. And it's also a great representation of the Fallout 76 community. Most people are friendly and nice. Now, that's going to be everything for this video. The new update is live and running. It's time for testing and for working on some new guides. Stay tuned for more content like this. I am Marta Branco. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. And well, you can always support me further by clicking in the links below the video. That's it for now. I will see you all very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye-bye.